everyone, you're very welcome to this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by sports journalist Thomas Conway from the Nina Garden. Thomas, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Shirley. Happy to be here. Um, I suppose it's a good time to have a podcast. The Fairy Ireland Leagues have finished and the month's championship is just around the corner. So it's a good time to, I suppose, look back on the senior and junior team's performances in the league. And also we'll talk about the Electric Ireland Minor Championship, which is unfortunately finished for Tipperary as well. Um, so we'll just begin, I suppose, with the Division 1A League. Um, Tipperary, you know, had off to a great start. Beck Galway, 4 9 one 9 at home in the first game. Superstar for Dennis Kelly's management career. Uh, a win over Dublin. A humdinger of a game against Cork, which they were beaten by two points. A massive win over Clare. But then the crunch game that they had to win against Kilkenny, unfortunately lost by a point. So I suppose Thomas overall, they're probably disappointed not to get to that league final. Yeah, look, it's a bag of mixed emotions, really, I think, from a Tipperary perspective. A very promising start to the league. I mean, that was a huge win over Galway, really, as you said, to kickstart Dennis Kelly's reign. And results after that, you know, quite promising as well. The game down in Piltown against Kilkenny, I mean, you know, it was frustration, I think, was the main emotion the tip players would have been feeling that weekend. Obviously, results subsequently didn't go their way uh, on the Sunday, and that deprived them of a place in the league final. And look, you can't but be really disappointed from a tip perspective. You could see it in their performances throughout the league. They really wanted silverware. They wanted to to at least contest a league final. And I think they probably probably merited a place in the league final. From what I saw, Tip, you know, they were quite impressive and were definitely one of the best teams in the league. I think they've, I won't say they've reinvented themselves because obviously, look, we had last season, last year's championship was disappointing from a Tip perspective. Things maybe didn't go their way that should have, couple of results, you know, went the wrong way. They still have the foundations there. And I think the foundations of this current team was set by Bill Mullaney and and his management team. And Dennis has has kind of advanced that and brought his own style. So I think, look, they would be hugely disappointed not to have contested the league final. But I think they will be trying to channel that emotion into the provincial championship. And I believe they, you know, their full value for, uh, or they will be well capable of doing so. Um, it'll be very interesting to see which way events unfold throughout the course of this year. I'm sensing big thing, things. I know we've said that in the past with TIP and it hasn't necessarily materialised. I know we were very ambitious going into the Munster Championship last year and maybe things didn't go to plan, but I really do get a sense this year that TIP have, have added a couple of strings to their bow and they are capable of achieving things seriously. Um, I suppose the killer blow would be then to see Galway going on and actually winning the the Fairy Ireland uh, League, Division One League, just last weekend in Crow Park. Um, so not only did we miss out on a spot, but to see Galway, who we had a good win over in the first round, actually go on and win it. But I mean, tip, you know, you can talk unlucky, obviously, to lose to Kenny by just a point. And like that day in Cork, lost to Galway the following day by a point. Um, you know, very small margins would have seen us in a league final. But at the end of the day, it was in our hands to get to that league final. We had to beat Kilkenny in Piltown. We failed to do so. Um, is there anything, I suppose, looking that on, back on that match that, you know, well, I suppose that we need to learn going forward like that we could have done better or what, you know? Yeah, killer instinct, Geraldine. That would be my assessment of it. Killer instinct. Just that that ability to score points when they were most needed. I mean, you saw it with Kilkenny, Denise Gull standing up with two late frees and slotting them both over the bar. Dubious frees maybe, and you can complain about the referee, you can make complaints like that. But I think that is the key with this tip team. I think we need to have that sharpness and that killer instinct, both from a defensive perspective and from an attacking perspective. You can have both. Um, I think tip demonstrated at times during the league Maybe a little bit of inexperience in the end cost them down in Piltown. Kind of inexperience of kind of that, you know, that critical moment when a game is in the balance. I think Tip needs to generate a bit of confidence there. I think we're lacking, we're lacking the confidence to be able to kill a game off and to be able to put a team to bed. And I think that was probably in evidence in Piltown against Kilkenny. Now we have to bear in mind Kilkenny All Ireland champions. You know, they're 
they were never going to be a pushover and Tip played well in that game. They were extremely lucky in the end and they were lucky the way events unfolded with Galway the following day. But I think that would that would be my assessment of the scenario. That kind of cutting edge and killer instinct in front of goal. We're still quite reliant on Ian McGrath and Clyde Chavan in terms of place balls and that and freeze. And look, to a certain extent, that's no harm. You can use that to your advantage in a team. If you know you have a, a consistent sharpshooter, uh, and we have two of them in Ian McGrath and Clyde, um, then you can play to your strengths and try to secure as many frees as possible. But you need to diversify your array of forwards that are scoring. And I think that was probably that was probably lacking against Kilkenny and maybe in a couple of games throughout the league. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Emer and Coyle because I've seen a tweet during the week, I think it was GA Statsman, had the top scores from the very Ireland League and uh, Emer was right up there. I think she had 20 points. I'll be the majority were from place balls, maybe 15 of them. Um, and Coyle, similar, um, had a, was up there on the charts. But from, from play who was up there, I think she could have been third or fourth in the chart, was Quiva Maher with two goals and eight points from play. I mean, that has been a, a, a something that has st- certainly worked, moving Quiva into the forwards. I know she still is an option out midfield as well, but, you know, in there, it's sometimes very close to, to the goals, and she's come out with two goals and eight points from play, and uh, one of the top scorers of the very Ireland League. Um, I suppose the big difference from last year as well is having Claude Quirk, having Karen Kendi and having Teresa Ryan all back in the team. And there's a couple of people who I think have definitely nailed down a starting spot to come, certainly for the Monster Championship, but even down the line for the All-Ireland Championship. I mean, they look to be looking at Claude at three, Karen at six, Julianne and Emer in the two corners. But I suppose there's still a lot of uh, places up for grabs and... The Monster Championship will probably be used to kind of finalise that start in 15. I would think so. I would think so. I, I don't think it will be... Look, uh, Tip will want to win as much silverware as they possibly can. I don't think the Monster Championship will be priority number one on their radar. Obviously, you know, everything builds up towards the championship. Um, But I think it is a hugely versatile Tip team now. I think that is one of the main differences. You mentioned Quiva Mar there. You mentioned a couple of the others. Tip are actually quite dynamic. They have a lot of different options and they can play in different ways, which is the hallmark of any good side. You need to be able to switch game plan. You need to be able to transition quickly uh, and use the ball effectively, whatever game, whether you're whether you're playing through the lines, whether you're playing that short stick passing game or whether you're going direct. And I think Tip actually do have the ability to do both now. I'm not sure that was there in the past. I think maybe in the past we were a little bit wedded to a particular game plan and maybe seemed to run out of ideas when we were confronted when, you know, when we ran up against the cosh. I think now Tip are a newly versatile unit. They're quite diverse in terms of their in terms of the players we have on our radar. You mentioned the likes of Karen Kennedy and Claude Quark. They are huge I was hugely impressed by Karen Kennedy during the league. I think she is an awesome, she's an awesome centre back, and she really dictates the middle third, which is very important. And I think it will be, it'll be extremely important when you run up against the likes of, the likes of Cork, the likes of Cork, the likes of Kenny, the likes of Galway, to be able to have someone who can dominate and marshal that middle third is critical. Uh, and I think Karen Kennedy has that ability to do that. I don't think she would be intimidated by the likes of, you know, Cork, Kenny or Galway. I don't think uh, she would be in any way phased by them. And I think she's quite a, she's a humble character. She goes about her work in kind of an understated way. You know, she doesn't, uh, um, you know, I, she, she strikes me as a player who can fulfill many different roles. And I think from a centre-back's perspective, she is your ideal character in this tip team now. Yeah, and just looking ahead to the Munster Championship, so Tip are out on the 6th of May. They're playing the winners of Waterford and Cork. So, like, that game is a 50-50 game, Waterford and Cork. Obviously, you'd, Cork would probably be favourites, but I think uh, Waterford are a really good league. You know, they were in the division, uh, 1B league, the 1-. Um, they'll be coming into that with lots of confidence. Cork probably, I think they'll, you know, would be very disappointed not to have won that league there. They've lost to Cork Galway now in a couple of finals the last couple of years. They would have really liked to have won that one. So that game could go either way, Waterford and Cork. And it's a knockout. So 
you lose that game, that's your Munster Championship over. But if you win that game, there's a huge prize in offer, obviously, a Munster final against either Clare or Limerick, which probably would be the weaker side of the draw. So, you know, if we were good enough to beat Waterford and Cork, you'd imagine we'd be good enough to beat either Clare or Limerick, even though Clare did beat us in the Munster Championship last year. But going by the league this year, Tip had a very big win over Clare in the league this year. But look, we won't read too much into that either. But, you know, I think a big, big game is needed against either Waterford or Cork on the 6th of May. It'll be on before uh, Tip and Cork and Parky Cueve. So, you know, it really is a big occasion. And like that, again, if you win that a week later, a chance of, of silverware in the Munster final. So I will, I do think Dennis will go all out to beat, uh, you know, Waterford or Cork on the 6th of May. Yeah, and maybe I'll kind of reserve what I said earlier on. I, you know, the prospect, any silverware, Tip are going to, you know, covet and cherish any piece of silverware at this stage. They really are just desperate, um, desperate for a title. And, you know, they're they're well capable of it. As you say, Cork Waterford, that'll be an intriguing game. I'd be very interested to see. I've watched Waterford's progress during the league um, and have been impressed with them, the bits and pieces I've seen. I'm not sure where Cork stand this year. I mean, they're obviously one of the best teams in it. They're always going to be. I think maybe they're a little bit lacking in confidence, a little bit lacking in the kind of uh, the usual corkness, if if you know what I, if you know what I mean. The kind of uh, that killer instinct, that enthusiasm that they usually have. But I think Tip will will look at that game and will target it. And I think Dennis, uh, you know, as well as craving silverware and that he'll want to use the Munster Championship in as productive a fashion as possible. I'd expect he'd use it to solidify his team, to nail down the couple of key positions that are still outstanding. And I think Tip are well capable of winning this Munster Championship. And I would go further. I mean, I can see Tip in the All-Ireland Series, you know, pitching it against the best of of the bunch. I mean, I really do think that there is massive potential in this Tip team. I really do think that they have the capability to do big things, to break that kind of... Cork to Kenny Galway, that triad, that kind of sphere of dominance. I think Tip can do that. Now, in order to do that, there are a couple of things they need to do. I think we need to, uh, as I say, diversify our forward line and um, maybe take the priority away from place balls, Kyle Devan and Eamon McGrath and focus on some other aspects of our play. I was hugely impressed in the league by the likes of Grace O'Brien and Roisin Howard. I thought they they adopted a real playmaker's role kind of in, in the forward line, almost kind of a, a Kean Lynch-esque kind of role that they played. And I think they're well capable of inflicting damage themselves. You also have other players, the likes of Claude McIntyre, I think, has to come back into the fray. You have other options at your disposal as well. So, I mean, Tip have an awful lot of options there. It's how they use them and what kind of game plan they uh, they attempt to pursue. And that should be in evidence during the Munster Good stuff, Thomas. So you're 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 positive about Tip going forward for the rest of the year. Look, I suppose ultimately they'll be disappointed missing out in the league final, but let's hope for uh, I suppose a bounce back in the Munster Championship, and we look forward to that game on the sixth of May. Um, just looking at the other Tipperary team in the league this year, Division Two B. Actually, as we're recording this, the replay Kilkenny and Cork reached the final, and it was a draw, and the replay is due to take place tomorrow, uh, in the County Community Grounds. Um, but I suppose this will be our t- this is our tip junior team. Obviously, we're talking about they're playing the junior championship uh, in Munster and in the All Ireland. But they were in the Division Two B league up against Cork, uh, Wexford, Galway, and Kilkenny. All teams that will be competing in the intermediate championship. I know you didn't see these games, Thomas, but I suppose the first game we suffered a big defeat against Cork. Uh, we didn't do too bad against Kilkenny. Lost three ten to two eight. Then recorded a very good win over Wexford at home, and more importantly, the final game we beat Galway away which means we survive in this division for another year. And that's going to give this team a real boost going into the Munster Championship. So there's definitely, this is a team that's improved with every game. Yeah, players coming will. back it from injury will. and a chance to, to do something in the Munster Championship. They're playing against Cork on the 6th of May at home. This will be Cork's third team. I'm not sure how Cork worked their junior team. Uh, they obviously only take part in the Munster Championship because they're intermediate in the in, in the All-Ireland Series, but maybe whether it's a, a minor team or a development team or just a third team, but they've huge numbers. But again, tip at home against Cork and a win here would really set them up nicely, uh, obviously for a Munster final against Limerick, but even more importantly, down the line for an All-Ireland Series. And potential is the word here yet again. I mean, there is huge potential in this tip team. They have a, 
they have a solid base there. I haven't seen, I'll be honest, I haven't seen much of their play uh, or many of their games, but I know from kind of reading through match reports and that, that they really have a solid structure there and that the players are heavily invested in it. So I think there is a potential, there is a potential, Munster Sheffield potential all Ireland in this tip uh, intermediate and junior teams. I mean, look, we saw the minors, the minors were exceptionally unlucky to lose out. Um, but I was still impressed with aspects of their play. And we see that constant stream of development coming through with Tip. I think there is a core kind of group of players there that are coming through, that are rising up the ranks steadily. And that's what you need. You need to replenish the senior team every year. You need to have new players coming in and fulfilling those roles. And I think the, the intermediate and junior teams offer that. Um, and, you know, if you, they can bag a bit of silverware in the process, then all the merrier, you know, all the better for it. Yeah, and look, David Sullivan and his management team are putting in huge work there. And look, they've had the likes of Gene Kelly from Lockney uh, come back from injury for the last two league games, and it has made a huge difference to their uh, results. So two wins from four, I think, in the in the Division 2B Championship so far, uh, or two wins from four in Division 2B Championship this year, I think they'll be more than happy with that. So our Miners uh, lost to Kenny in the first round of Letcher Garden Minor Championship. Uh, then they had a win over Dublin, a great win over Galway at home, went to Cork hoping for a win. Unfortunately, that didn't materialise. And then it all came down to the final game last weekend against Waterford. I know we were at that game. I suppose the one thing that a lot of people were wondering, you know, we had, I think we led a 1-6 to a point. How did we ultimately lose that game? Yeah, you have to, you you know, there's no way you have to be critical of it. We allowed we allowed them back into the game when we really, really shouldn't have. Really, you know, in a very strong, in a very commanding winning position. And then all of a sudden to let that kind of league slip. I know, you know, I know both the management and the players were hugely disappointed in the aftermath. They really, really felt uh, that it was a game they should have won. And it was a game the tip should have won. And look, you have to... I don't want to question their character or that because the team tried their hearts out and they wore their hearts in their sleeve and they have done for the course of this championship. But it is a really potent lesson which they've learned, a really harsh lesson which they've learned. And that is that games can slip away regardless of the position you're in. You know, that's the nature of Komogi. That's the nature of hurling uh, at this level in particular. And the way in which um, Waterford came back into that game, it was hugely impressive from a Waterford perspective you know, you have to give fair juice to them. Um, but very disappointing when you look at it from a Tipperary point of view. I thought, because Tip, you know, Tip are an excellent side in many different respects and they were hitting points from all sorts of angles at one juncture in the game, uh, did well to score a penalty, but then in the end kind of just fell foul of that Waterford were not able to, were not able to hold to Waterford momentum. Uh, and that ultimately proved to be their downfall. Yeah, but I suppose the other side is quite a young Tipperary team. We got to the All Ireland semi final last year, but majority of that team were overage for this year. And a lot of our team this year was made up of, I suppose, the under 16 team that reached uh, the Munster and under 16 All Ireland final last year. So I suppose next year will be a big year for this minor team. Um, more of them will be up to the age. It'll be the team, like I said, that reached the Munster and All Ireland final at under 16 level. So there's still plenty to look forward to with this group of players. Oh, yeah, there is. You know, there's plenty. There will be plenty more left of the tank. And really, maybe, hopefully, they can channel the disappointment of this year into something positive for, for next year. And I do believe they can do that because there is the seeds of a really good team there, a really strong and commanding team. And I do think, you know, if they are nurtured, if they are given the right guidance and that, that they can they can bounce back from this. But certainly, it's a harsh lesson, a harsh lesson they've learned. Um. And they will be very sore after it. But no, definitely there is hope there for the future. And they still actually have a Munster Championship to, to play. It doesn't happen till later in the summer, which is kind of a bit of a funny one in my opinion. But I suppose it can be used to look forward to next year or look, it could go all out and try and win a, a Munster campaign as well. But uh, I suppose um, the minor All-Ireland semi-finals will go ahead this weekend, actually. And Tipperary are not in it. It's a... Uh, the top four teams, Kilkenny, Galway, Cork and Waterford. And in fairness to Waterford, they beat Cork as well. So well-deserving of their place in the All-Ireland semi-final. Um, I suppose just a pity for Tip's uh, point of view that we couldn't get to, you know, a good win over Galway. Um, but look, just a few games just slipped away from us. 
and uh, just missed out on all Ireland semi final spot. But uh, look, there's still plenty to look forward to. There's a Munster Championship on the 6th of May, Tipperary, a home to, to uh, Cork in the junior and away to the winner, winners of Waterford and Cork. That's actually down in Park Creeve, part of a double header. And uh, look, it'd be great to win that one and have another double header then for the Munster final. So plenty to look forward to. Then we have the All Ireland, obviously, Championship later on in the summer. We'll talk to you, Thomas, again before that. But for today, thanks for coming on the, the podcast there this evening. That's all we have for this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. Thanks again to Thomas Conway of the Nina Garden for his brilliant insight and analysis, as always. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the show and we'll see you again soon.